Let's see how to do a reverse level order traversal of a binary tree. To do a reverse level order traversal means to visit every node in the last level of the tree, left to right, then all the nodes in the second to last level, left to right, and so on, all the way up to the first level. Let's see this with an example. So here we have a binary tree, and to do a reverse level order traversal of it, means to start at the last level and visit the nodes left to right. So in this case, it's only seven. Then go to the previous level and visit left to right. So it'll be four, five, six, then the previous level left to right, two, three, and then the previous level left to right, so that's one. So it'll be seven, four, five, six, two, three, one. So how do we actually do this? If you remember, if we do a level order traversal to this, traversing starting from the first level going uh, left to right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there we use a queue and we initially push the root node to the queue and then we go to the queue, we set the current node to the front of the queue and then we visit that node and we add the left child to the queue and then the right child to the queue. So if what we do instead, we first add the right child to the queue and then the left child to the queue, what we will get is a level order traversal where we visit every level starting from the first, but going right to left. So the output would be 1, 3, 2, 6, 5, 4, 7. If you notice, this is exactly the reverse output of what we actually want. So if you were to reverse this output, we would get 7. 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 1, which indeed is a reverse level order traversal. To reverse the output, what we will do, we will use a stack. So as we visit the nodes, instead of actually visiting, so printing them, we will add them to the stack, and then when the queue is empty, we will simply pop everything from the stack and print it. So let's actually do this. So we start with the root node, we push it to the queue, and we go to the queue, we set the current node to the front of the queue, one. We pump the queue, and then instead of visiting, so instead of printing the node, we push it to the stack. Then we add the right child to the queue, followed by the left child. We go back to the queue, and we set the current node to the front of the queue, so 3. We pop the front of the queue, we push to the stack the current node, and then we first add the right child to the queue, and then it doesn't have a left child. We go back to the queue, we set the current node to the front of the queue, so 2. We pop it from the queue, and we push the current node to the stack. Then we add the right child to the queue, followed by the left child. We go back to the queue, and we set the current node to the front of the queue, so six. We pop it from the queue, and we push it to the stack. Then we add the left child to the queue, because it doesn't have a right child. We go back to the queue, we set current node to the front of the queue. So 5. We pop the queue and we push it to the stack. Then we do not add any children because 5 doesn't have any children, so we're done with the 5. So we go back to the queue and we set the current node to the front of the queue. We pop the front of the queue and we push the current node to the stack. Then there are, it has no children, so we're done with it. We go back to the queue, we set the current node to the front of the queue, so seven. We pop the front of the queue and we push the current node to the stack. Then seven doesn't have any children, so we're done with it. We go back to the queue, but this time the queue is empty, so in the case that we're done. So what we do now, we will pop the values from the stack and we print them as we pop them. So initially we print the top of the stack, 7, 
pop it print the top 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 and pop it so the final output is seven four five six two three one which indeed is the reverse level or the traversal of this tree let's see how to actually implement this so we'll have a function called reverse level order which takes the address to the root node and returns nothing so the first thing we do we check if root is null because if root is null the tree is empty so there is nothing to traverse So we return if root is equal to null. But if root is not equal to null, we will initialize our queue and our stack. Then we push to the queue the root node. And while the queue is not empty, what we do, we set the current node to the front of the queue. We pop the front of the queue and we push the current node to the stack. Stack that push current. Then, what we do, we check, does current have a right child? And if so, we add it to the queue. So if current right is different from null, we add it to the queue. Then we check, does current have a, right, a left child? The current left is different from null. In that case, we add it to the queue as well. And then, once we exit the while loop, which happens when the queue becomes empty, we know that we have populated our stack. So what we do, as we saw, is to print what's on top and pop it, and do this as long as the stack is not empty. So while the stack is not empty, print what's on top, and pop the stack. And that's it. Let's actually run through an example to demonstrate that this actually works. So we have the same tree we've seen before, and we call it reverse level order, passing in the root node in this case one, which we'll check is root null, root is not null. So we initialize our queue q and our stack st. Then we push to the queue the root, so one. And while the queue is not empty, we set current to the front of the queue, one. We pop the front of the queue, we push to the stack current, and we check is current right different from null. The right of 1 is 3, so it's different from null, so we push it to the queue. Then we check is current left different from null. The left of 1 is 2, so it's different from null, so we push it to the queue. Then we go back to the condition of the loop, the queue is not empty, we set current to the front of the queue, so 3, we pop the queue, we push to the stack current, so to the stack, actually it's better to do bottom up, so we have one at the bottom, and then we push the 3, instead of having it here. Okay. Then we check is current right different from null. The right of three is six, so it's different from null. We push it to the queue. 
then we check is current left different from null. The left of 3 is null, so we do nothing. We go back to the condition, queue is not empty, set current to the front of the queue to. We pop the front of the queue, we push it to the stack, and we check is current right different from null. The right of 2 is 5 different from null, so we push to the queue the right of 2, so 5. Then we check is the left of 2 different from null. The left of 2 is 4, so we push it to the queue. Then queue is not empty, we set current to the front of the queue 6. We pop the front of the queue, we push current to the stack, and we set check is current right different from null. The right of 6 is null, so we do nothing. Is the left of 6 different from null? The left of 6 is 7, so we push it to the queue. We go back to the condition of the loop, set current to the front of the queue, which is 5. We pop the front of the queue, we push to the stack current, check is current right different from null, the right of 5 is null, so we do nothing, the left of 5 is also null, so we do nothing. The queue is not empty, set current to the front of the queue, or we pop the front of the queue, we push current to the stack, and we check is the right of 4 different from null, the right of 4 is null, the left of 4 is also null, so we do nothing. Q is not empty, set current to the front of the Q7. We pop the front of the Q, we push to the stack current, and we check is the right different from null, the right of 7 is null, is the left different from null, the left of 7 is also null, so again we do nothing. We go back to the condition, this time the queue is empty, so we exit this while loop and now we go to the next while loop. So while the stack is not empty, we're gonna get what's on top, access the value and print it. So what's on top is 7, so we print it. Then we pop the top of the stack, stack is still not empty, we print what's on top and we pop it. Still not empty, we print what's on top and pop it. Still not empty, we print what's on top and pop it. Not empty, print what's on top, pop it, print what's on top, pop it, print what's on top, pop it. And now when we go back to the condition, stack is empty, so we exit this while loop and we exit the function, so we're done. So the output is 7, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 1 which indeed is correct. Let's analyze the time complexity of this function. So we initially do some constant amount of work and then we enter this while loop. Notice that every time in this while loop we push uh, current to the stack. So we know that every node will be pushed to this stack exactly once. So the body of the loop will overall execute n times and the amount of work we do inside is constant. So the work we do with this while loop in total will be all of n. And the next while loop will also execute n times because every time we pop a value from the stack, we know that initially the stack has all n nodes and because every iteration we pop a node from the stack, this will run n times and every time we do a constant amount of work, so this is again will be all of n work associated with this loop. So overall the time complexity dot fall will be all of n. What about the space complexity? It will depend on what the maximum size that the stack and the queue combined will reach. So if we think about a node of the tree, it initially is not inside the queue nor inside the stack, then we push it to the queue and then we pop it from the queue and push it to the stack. Therefore, at any point in time, a node is either neither inside the queue <clears throat> nor inside the stack or is inside the queue or is inside the stack. So the worst case happens when a node, when every single node of the tree is either in the queue or in the stack. 
This, for example, happens in the end where all the nodes are in the stack. So this means that the maximum number of nodes that will be in the queue and the stack in the worst case is n. So the space complexity is simply O of n. You can find the link to the code in the description below.